Hello and welcome to another episode of It Would Seem As Though, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and nothing. Mostly nothing. Mostly nothing. I mean, there's a lot of times it really is nothing. And sometimes today we're going to talk about something, because today is the second day of February, which is Black History Month. Oh, by the way, I'm Vesta. I'm Baba Yaga. (laughs) Also known as Annika. I didn't know that you had a... Mm-hmm. It depends. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. I don't want people to get oh, well, sure. know me too well. You know? Right. That makes sense. Uh, my, I, You know, it's like I have a little issue with Black History Month, and it's not that I think there shouldn't be one. I think that it's kind of crazy that, A, we need one, because it's just history mm-hmm. that is, of course, not taught. But in my lifetime, I've seen just the same same you know people talked about in my school in my kids school and and that was a huge difference probably when you were in school I mean really we had the usual suspects it was Ruby Bridges Martin Luther King Rosa Parks Harriet Tubman Booker T. Washington though great Mm -hmm. those are all important people to know about absolutely and then when Obama was elected then Obama became a part of that yes Mm -hmm. because We have our little uh, thing project that one of the kids made still on the window that's about Ruby Bridges and all of the other people who I just talked about. And that was their project for Black History Month. And it's like... But it really just is always the same group. Now, I actually talked about that one day on one of the TikToks I made. And somebody came back at me and said, well, you are dead wrong. You couldn't be more wrong. All these other people are taught. And I was like, awesome. Congratulations. If they are taught in the school you go to or that you mm-hmm. went to, how lucky are you? Applause, applause, applause. Right. But I was like, what about other people? What about Madam C.J. Walker? Mm. You know, she's not self-made only a Self-made millionaire. Self-made millionaire. Yes, the very ma'am. first black female. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. Self-made millionaire because she created hair products. Yep. And you go to many a black hair salon today and her picture is hanging up there because she is that important. I want you to know that there's this famous picture of her driving whatever car, some bougie car down the street and there's two, of, three of her girlfriends in there, two other black women and one white woman and I told my spouse, that was me, I was that white woman back in the day sitting in the car with all them black women, that had to have been me. Right, kiki in yeah. and talking trash about all the other white people. Exactly. Right. <laughs> But, you know, in my, in my list, this is just my list of people I think should be talked about. Uh, Langston Hughes, mm-hmm. a very important poet. Also, probably a homosexual, no one's sure. No, probably not. I mean, you know. <laughs> they didn't they, have homosexuality back right. then. Oh, probably true. Uh, Lorraine Hansberry, playwright, wrote Raisin in the Sun. Very first uh, show to go on Broadway, written mm-hmm. by a black woman. Which, when you think about it, that's a big deal. Huge deal. Yeah. Josephine Baker. Right. Who had to go all the way to France to become the phenomenon that she was. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was an amazing singer, dancer, actress, whatever. And in America, they're like, well, you can perform on the Chitlin circuit, which is what it's called, or was called. It may not be that anymore. But it was like, you can go on all these club dates where only black people will come see you. Yep. Whereas in France, they were like, Oh my God, you're amazing. We're going to make you this international star, which is what she became. You know, uh, James Baldwin. Right. Oh, James Baldwin. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, uh, Joseph Rainey, he was the first black man elected to the House of Representatives in South South Carolina in 1870. Hmm. He almost didn't get there because... Well, because he was a black man in 1870. Of the white people. Right. Well, because the Civil War had ended five years prior. Uh, Hiram Rhodes, uh, I, Hiram Rhodes Reed, U.S. Congress, also same year. He actually, they tried to block, white people, of course, tried to block him getting into his seat in Congress. Because why? They said that he didn't meet the citizenship requirement. Mm. Because you had to be a citizen nine years. Okay. Well, slavery had only ended just five years prior. Girl. And as slaves, they were not considered to be citizens. Right. Well, you, you Or even be, whole people. No, right. You were property, girl. Mm-hmm. Right. Property. You were an Which, object. What the hell? And, you know, I'm going to take a little detour. 
because that just made me think of something else that I wanted to talk about. In Florida right now, my you know, favorite. I know last time we talked about Kansas being a shithole, but Florida. Girl, Florida. Florida is a sad DeSantos, honey. that guy. Oof, woof. Yeah. He has presented a bill that's already been passed through the House. Oh. It's okay. the White Discomfort Bill. Oh, I knew about Did this. Did you hear about this? Ugh. Girl, I hate it. And I'm going to read now. So if it sounds like I'm reading, it's because I am. It's a new bill in Florida that would ban public schools and private businesses from making people feel discomfort when being taught about racial history, discrimination, whatever. An individual, by virtue of his race or sex, in other words, white men, does not bear the responsibility for their actions committed in the past by other members of the same race or sex, white men. Right. An individual should not be made to feel discomfort, guilt, or anguish, or any other form of psychological distress on account of his or her race. Oh my god. Okay, let me tell you something. No one's saying you currently in the year 2020, you're the reason for slavery. No one's saying that. That isn't ever the argument about race, right? And white people being in charge or the culprit. It's about you just upholding the same system that your ancestors built into this nation. You know what I mean? Well, and the part about that that's really, I think, well, not most bothersome, the whole thing's bothersome, is white people specifically can't even stand a little discomfort. No, that's It's so- like, you tell them anything, it's like, well, here is how, yes, you're right, you sure didn't own slaves. Mm-mm. You're, probably even your grandparents didn't. However, you are still benefiting mm-hmm. off of this system, and here is how. Yes. And it's like, well, I don't like this, this makes me uncomfortable. I might have to think about some Girl, things. Girl, then be uncomfortable. No, can't be. Can't <laughs> have the slightest discomfort because I will die. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what will happen. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's like, when you start talking to white people about everyone having the same rights, I swear to God, they all visualize it like pie. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, but if she gets more than I get less, no. That's not how that No, works. no, no. If we all have equal rights, yes. then we all get the same portion of the same goddamn yep. pie. And we were just talking about this, because my example of white privilege is that you just didn't have obstacles in your way as a white person. Right. Maybe you did, but race wasn't one of them. You didn't walk out of your house and be judged immediately by your skin tone. And that's the whole point of white privilege is that it's not about you just being wealthy or better than or having a great silver spoon life. It's that you didn't have the obstacles that black and brown bodies do have. Right. Right. Well, and I know I I was uh, talking to you about this definition that I really loved of white privilege, which is... uh, it's being able to walk into a store and find in the main displays shampoo and pantyhose that are catered towards your skin and hair type. Yep. And it's being able to turn on the television and see the people of your race widely represented. Mm-hmm. It's being able to move through life without being racially profiled or unfairly st- stereotyped. All those things. I mean, think about it. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be a big deal that Band-Aids just came out in actual skin tones right. of more than just white people. Yes. Yes. But it is a big deal it's because it's never deal. happened. No. I mean, it's like they've been, and they've been referred to for 150,000 years as flesh color. Right. Or skin tone. In short, but one flesh color. Right. A singular flesh White color. people. Right. And so I've seen so many people having a fuss about why is this a big deal that there is now brown band-aids? Because if nothing ever mm-hmm. came in your color, yeah, I'm going to tell you as a woman with big feet... When I go shopping for shoes and there's actually a shoe in my size, I shed a tear. <laughs> Especially Girl. if it's a cute shoe, because I'm usually having to wear some ugly ass shoes. We just I wrap big bags feet. around your feet and send you on the, your way. I just wear the shoe box. Yes, ma'am. Put a bow on it and yes. call it cute, and I look like freaking Minnie Mouse. High fashion. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. Yeah. I mean, not to that level, of sure. course, but that one example. I mean, we were in Target last year, I think, right Who after knows? everything kind of opened up. And I saw, we were in the Crayola and the coloring and the craft aisle, and I saw this box that was a box of markers that was all skin tones. And it is every skin tone from your pasty white cast oh, ass okay. all the way up wow. to uh, Lupita Nyong'o. Yes, ma'am. I mean, and it's everything in between. It's red brown and brown brown and all, almost black and white. And it was like, I, ha- I don't mm-hmm. even like to color. You, you know, know me. Oh, girl, boring. <laughs> 
I <laughs> bought this because I was like, this is important. Mm-hmm. This is groundbreaking. Yeah. And in 2021, it should not have been groundbreaking. No. It should, the ground should have been broke a long time <clears throat> ago. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it, it, was, it wasn't that many years ago that Crayola stopped calling peach, you know, skin tone, yeah. or flesh color. And or peach girl, who that color? I, I don't. Donald Trump's kind of orangey, so Ooh. it's not quite peach. Ooh, but it's can we not taint him with it? <laughs> taint this with him, I meant. Right. Girl. For me, I think, and I know that we discussed this earlier, that one of uh, the things for me that was kind of confusing about white privilege is when I first heard the term, I was like, privilege? Mm-hmm. Girl, I didn't grow up with any privilege mm-hmm. being poor and fat and queer and whatever living in the country with the hillbillies i didn't have any privilege but when i actually had it explained to me what white privilege specifically was it was like oh Mm -hmm. yes no one has ever followed me through the store because i'm white no one has ever uh not giving you a job no no one has ever been like oh you probably can't write a check here because you're white or Mm -hmm. you know i never have feared for my life getting stopped I have feared mm-hmm. for my bank account, but never my life right. when getting stopped by the police. And so I don't have to have those conversations with my children either. No. I mean, I tell them, you know, don't be stupid. Right. Make good choices, you know, whatever. If you ever drive and you, you know, always be polite. Don't. Yeah. But I'm not ever worried that someone's going to go, oh, this child probably has a weapon. I'm going to have to kill them. Mm-hmm. You know, which is a very real thing. And so at that point I was like, Okay. I get it. Mm-hmm. But the problem I see with white people and white privilege is that they think if they have been inconvenienced in any other way in life that they don't have it. Right. You know. Right. So that's just kind of crazy to me. It's like, you, that's not even what that means. That's not what that means at all. But people do assume that it just means like, oh, I grew up again like with a silver spoon. Oh, I have all this privilege. I was able, you know what I mean, I went to a good high school. I was able, my parents paid for college out of pocket. Like, that's not what we're talking about. It's just talking about that you didn't have to hurdle literally everything else in your life to get where you are. Right. To even just survive. Right. Right. And if you did go to college, people didn't go, oh, well, you probably were filling a quota. Right, exactly. You got into college because you're black. Mm -hmm. You probably don't even have to pay for college. Right. Because you're filling a quota. That's you, how that works. You know, you got this job at this company mm-hmm. because of, you know, the laws saying they have to hire so many You know, mm-hmm. no. No. How about they got the job because they were the most qualified person? Right. You know, how about they got into college because they got good grades and worked their asses off to get there? How about they're probably taking out the same billions of dollars of student loans that no one will ever be able to pay off mm-hmm. as everyone else? No. But you assume that... There is some magic thing to having black... Where it's like, oh, well, I get you get all these privileges that I don't get. No. Nope. No. No. <laughs> no. It I mean, doesn't work that It way. wasn't even until the 60s where, like, Civil Rights Act was passed. Do you know what I mean? So it was like... It is crazy to me that... Well, just ending slavery wasn't that long ago no. in the history of the world. But, yes, the Civil Rights Act was passed in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. And the fact that it has... Still not changed most things. No. I mean, it's like, you look at the way that the Republicans are now trying to change all of the voter stuff right. to suppress the votes of black people. Right. I mean, think about what Mitch McConnell said the other day mm. when he said that, that Americans vote almost the same as black Americans. It's like, no. so they're not... Americans? Yeah. They're a special... <clears throat> special like, kind. And he, of course, is such an old turtle. He didn't even get Mm-mm. that he had said something that was offensive and right. stupid. Because he's stupid. Right. Right. But it was like... But they're doing so much stuff to try and basically reenact the Jim Crow laws. Yeah. It was like, we... You know, you can't vote... You We've taken out all these voting places to make it harder to get there. Mm-hmm. We've beefed up the ID laws. So you have to have the specific... Well, what if you don't have ID? But you are registered to vote. Well, then you can't vote. What you know? And then they took away so many polling places that there were cities where they would go... People would have to drive for hours I have an example to vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, in inner city Detroit, it was a couple elections ago, they took out most, if not all, polling booths within 
the city and you had to go to the suburbs. But if you don't have a car, you know what I mean? Like if it's not accessible to you, then you